You know the fellas in the black suits now with the name tags and they knock on your door and they want to talk about the bible the moment three stripes here that's right yes yes they, they i think they're they, they're now part of the military i believe right they what do they do they knock on your door and would show you the stripes say my name's norman and then if there's a crowd of them and they say i'm also my name's norman and then they, what do they talk, what do they do with you then? Usually they try and sell you a candle. That's the usual, uh, I suppose, ploy. A nice big candle that you can big. put in your and light it in the evening and save the electricity now. You see, I know they're actually working for the electricity board to put people off buying candles by selling them then. See, it's very, very clever advertising. Great marketing. Oh, yes. Opportunities quite open. Yeah, fucking hell. It wasn't, there wasn't, I left the UK a long time ago. I must tell you that you, I, I think we lost contact for many years. And and then during those many years, uh, that, that kind of went, during those many years, I was looking for a home away and wandering the earth. And, and, and then I came here, so I, I'm a bit out of touch. I don't remember many Normans about when I, I left the UK, and candles were very difficult to get. I remember that. The people used to run round before mobile phones, and they'd go, quick, everyone, there's candles in the market. And everyone would go, what, candles? And they'd all make a run for the market, and they'd sell out of them real fucking fast. I remember that. I don't remember them coming to your door. No. Well, I looked into it anyway, and I actually found out that the proceeds from all the candles that they sold was actually going to charities in the third world, which is amazing, really. I had no notion, did you know? So, like, they don't like to blow their own trumpet, but they'll blow yours anytime, especially if you have one underneath the stairs in a small box. They, they blow your candle out, basically. They sell it to you. And then when you light it, they blow it out. Is that what you're saying? Well, well, yes, yes, essentially. That is what goes on. But uh, most people don't recognise the symptoms, you see. The symptoms usually start with a rash on the leg and then spreads up into pimples around the nose. Ooh. And then after that, after that, it's actually possible to buy a candle with money. Hard-earned cash. From a hard I guess, work person. I guess if, 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 if that's the case and, and the candles are causing horrific skin diseases, plus when you light them, a mysterious wind blows them out, it does make them last longer, generally, doesn't it? You know. Well, do you know, people would be melting down the candles and then using them to wax their legs and chests and, and that kind of thing. So, so really and truly, it, it is like we need more education about how to safely use candles. That's what. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew this bloke in London, right? He's 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 an interesting story. This his name was Jim. Jim, not Norman. His name was Jim, and he had this great idea, Jim. Yeah, Jim the Jim. We used to call him like J I M the G Y M. Jim the Jim. No, I don't mind. Just don't, don't be calling me Jim now. Do you hear me? That's no, not my okay. name. I won't be calling you Jim, I promise. Anyway, Jim the Jim had a really, really good business idea. His idea was this. He explained it to me once. He said, look, tell. He said, look, I'm going to get a load of candles together, right? Like, not just like 10, 
for like thousands, thousands of candles. He was going to mug Normans and nick their candles. Then he was going to take them to this big place and put them in a big pot, like a cauldron, you know, like a great big cauldron. And then he was going to melt them down, right? Put them over a fire. He was going to melt them all down. And then the, he, the genius of the idea was he was then going to make candles out of them. That, that was his uh, fucking business idea. Brilliant idea. Yeah, I bet it was fine and dandy at the time, but now, not a chance. All those climate crisis individuals saying, oh, you can't even burn candles or coal or turf. Don't even burn wood. How are we meant to stay warm in the winter? Snuggle oh, oh, up to our sheep again? Yeah, oh, yeah, or hedgehogs. You can't, you no. can't burn them, you can't eat them, you can't kick them. You can't even speak uh, ni uh, not nicely to them. You've got to say, hello, hedgehog, I, how are you today? And i got nothing against you, yeah, and please, uh, I respect you. And then you don't even fucking chuck, oh, here's an hedgehog, quick, chuck it on the right. fucking fire. Burn it, and then use its spines to, like, pick bits of meat off it at the end. You can't do that. Can't burn candles, can't burn fucking coal, can't burn fucking witches either. They were a good source of fuel back in the day. That was no. That wasn't for fuel. It's me. No, according to uh, old Breton law now, seventh and eighth century, if I found your cat inside my house, inside my food, and it was eating it, I'd be allowed to kill it. And eat it. Well, I might. Yeah, I suppose. And and if I don't have a cat. Well, it's obviously not yours then. It's someone else's. <laughs> you fucking cat murderer. How dare you? I didn't say I did it. I said I was allowed to. You just oh, chuck yeah. it on the fire with the hedgehogs and the witches. It keeps you warm in the winter, isn't it? Because, hold on, they've not said you can't burn witches. What they're saying is don't burn, don't burn oil, don't burn candles, don't burn wood, don't burn coal, don't burn nuclear fucking uranium rods. But no one said you can't burn witches and you can't burn cats or hedgehogs. Well, maybe hedgehogs because they're protected. Well, cats are not friends of witches. Cats yes, are friends of witches. Yeah, exactly. Where shouldn't really burn them. Witch. You know? Where there's a witch, there's a cat. Where there's a cat, there's a witch. Burn them both in the winter. No one said you can't do that, right? But really True. and truly, I think the main issue here is that before long, all we'll be able to burn on our fires is our own shit. That's what it's coming to, I'm telling you now. No wood, no coal, no turf, only your own shit. And maybe animal shit as well. Sure. So, cat shit? Hmm. Cat shit? Bird shit? Bird shit, dog shit? Ant shit? Do Hard ant shit? Collect. And shit yeah, is notoriously yeah. difficult to recycle as well. So but if you if you just get the ants' nest and capture the whole thing, right? Oh, nice. Uh, if you get the whole thing, throw it on the fire, they go up like sparkers. Do you know that? They do. They, they do. <laughs> Firecrackers like that. Try it. You'd want what to mind that now, really and truly, especially if you have a thatched roof, which yeah, I do. Don't burning ants flying about the place everywhere, do you? What was that, the round, was that one of your balls? You was holding up there. Uh, no, it was a, a tomato. No. A little green tomato. 